All right, in this demonstration, I am going to show you how you can uh, not only create a page naming function, but uh, how to include it inside of a functions file so that it can cascade throughout your entire website. And you may have already created a page naming function before, like in an exercise, but in this one, I'm actually going to show you some, some things that um, are going to be affected differently by the fact that we are uh, going to be including it in a functions file. Okay, so first thing I want you to do is go into your htdocs folder and find the project that you had last worked on. Um, for mine, it was um, the uh, JS includes where we act I actually had already added the JavaScript a mobile menu and then I had uh, set it up so that it had modularization so that the the head of the document and the footer of the document uh, were uh, set, taken out and put into uh, separate include files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this and I'm going to duplicate it on Windows. You could just copy and paste it and I'm going to rename it for some, you know, something that's like a fourth version uh, so that I've got my previous versions in case something gets messed up. And uh, I'm going to add on here, uh, and I think I'm going to just change this to functions. All right. Okay. So um, that way I will know that this is the, the version where I've started to make functions. And this is the version that I'm going to go ahead and start working on. So I'm going to double click that and open it in Dreamweaver. The other thing that you need to make sure of, of course, is that you are actually running your JAMP or MAMP or whatever your web service is. Uh, so I've got my Apache service running. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and let's just go to, into Chrome and I'm going to show you what, what it is that we're talking about doing here. So let's go and click on project one functions that we just made. I'll click on this template file. And what I want to do is I want to make the page naming function that would allow me to automatically generate where it says here page ID banner h2 it would automatically generate the name of the page based on the name of the file and the other thing that it would be able to do is then also generate the title that's up that shows up here in the the tab top of the window and it could also do some other things as well like for instance uh, I could use that information to also pass a variable into the heading level one here if you wanted uh, however you want okay so and we had also, you know, discussed making styles that could style pages independently of one another. So let's take a look at doing that. Let's jump back over here to Dreamweaver. And what you'll see here, if you remember, is we've already included uh, the head.ink.php file as well as the foot.ink.php file to give us our, you know, the top of our page and then the bottom of our page. So what I want to do is actually go inside of head.ink.php and I want to be able to create uh, something that is going to help us make that page naming. So we've probably done this already a little bit, but I want to show you in this demo some things that uh, are going to be really specific to what we're doing with uh, the functions page that we're going to end up making. So there's some special considerations you know that we need to think about so up before the doc type first thing I want to do is type some PHP tags okay and then inside of that PHP tag I, I want to go ahead and tab this in and the first thing that I want to do is I want to be able to grab some information from the server super global array and the information that I'm looking for is the path you know not just the path but the file name that is currently our you know, our current page that we're on, all right? And then we're going to use that information to do something, all right? So the first thing you'd want to do then is you want to do an echo command, and then I'm going to do the server super global array, and then we'll do PHP self. There's some other things that you could do. I, I'm going to choose PHP self, all right? And let's just start with that. We're going to echo the PHP self server super global. And let's just uh, save that and We'll do a really quick test, hit refresh, and then you see it puts it right up here before the doc type, and that's fine. I just wanted to echo it and make sure that it was showing up correctly. 
and we'll jump back over here. In fact, let's do this. Let's kind of make this smaller so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better and jump back and forth more conveniently. Okay. Okay, so I've got this set up now the way that I want it. All right, so instead of just echoing this, now I want to actually store that inside of a variable. Let's just say that we're going to call it page, and we'll say page equals this, right? And then what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to echo that in other places. So like in the title, for instance, we talked about that. And let's go back. And we'll say echo page. And then I could take the same thing here. Let's copy this. And I can also have it get echoed down here. Let's try that. OK. Let's save that, do a test. All right. And it's working. So what it's doing is it's up here in the title area. You can see it up here. It's putting the entire pathway. It's also doing it here for the H2. It's putting the entire pathway for our uh, file. So if you remember, what we really need to do is limit that to what it pulls, and we just want the file name. So if you remember from before, and this should be sort of a review if you did your exercises, uh, we're going to use the base name function on that. Let's save it, refresh it, and now you see it's just pulling the actual file name. Basically what base name does, if you remember, is it strips everything uh, in the pathway before the, the file name, and it just gives us the file name. And if we wanted to get rid of that, um, uh, PHP, okay, if we wanted to get rid of that last little bit for PHP, uh, base name actually has two different parameters, so we can put a comma here, and then in uh, quotation marks, if we do .php, it will strip off that file extension, okay, so let's save that, hit a refresh, and there, now we just have the word template, because that is actually our page name, if you look right here, it's stripping off this uh, .php, and it also has that name up here in the title. And you might look at that and go, well, that's what it kind of said before up in the title. But you can see now that it's dynamically generating this information right here. All right, so what we need to do is come back over here, and we need to, at this point, obviously that's not all we need to do. We need to actually start to run some filters so that we can figure out whether or not we're on the right page or, you know, based on whatever page we are on that we need to be able to assign some information. And so the way that we did that before in a previous demonstration was we used the switch uh, control feature. So we'll do switch and then this is where the parameter goes that we're testing. And what we're going to do is we're going to test page. We're going to test to see what the value of page is. And rem if you remember f about switch, the switch case is going to be where, uh, and it's a, it's a conditional test, right? It's it's only going to be a Boolean value of true or false up here. It can't be something that's a comparative value in terms of like degree, you know, greater than, less than, whatever. It it's not something where you can test like that. You either see if something is or if something isn't. Okay. So what we're doing is we're testing to. Uh, as a comparison value, the value of page, and then we're going to see if it, if all of these other cases are or are not page. Okay. Now, one approach that you could take is you could test for specific page names, um, and I think that's probably what we've done in some of the previous exercises. But in this case, um, I think really the exception, you know, because you would normally test stuff and then you would have a default fallback, right? In this case, our default fallback really is is sort of the exception to the rule, which would be um, index. And so it might be easier just to test for the index page first. So if we were to do something like case, and then we're going to type index, for instance. And index, we don't want to put the .php, because remember up here, we've already stripped that off as part of uh, creating the value for page. So if it is the index.php file, um, it's already stripped off the .php, and so we just want to look for the word index. So in the case of index, what we can do is that's where we would probably want to rename something um, so that we would create something like, let's try page title. Let's create a variable called page title and have it equal, uh, I don't know, for right now, the word welcome. Okay, and we can always change this later. Okay, um, and then... Uh, 
we can always come back and do something else later. And then uh, we would want to do our break because that's you got to have the break. And then the next thing is that you would want to say instead of another case, you could do default. And then uh, the default position would be such that we are basically taking page title. Let's copy that again. And we're making it equal page. Okay, because if we are, if let's think about this really quickly. If we are trying to name our file names with the actual name that we expect for the page to be, you know, displayed up here in the title and up here in the heading, uh, like about us or whatever, then then the trick is that we actually really and truly want the page name or the page title to actually be what is being passed as this you know page variable okay because we're stripping off the PHP we're going to base name we can do some other things on it by the way too all right so so we actually want the page title to equal whatever page value gets returned the only one that's going to be different is going to be index because we don't want it to show up saying right here where it says template we don't want it to show up to say index and we don't want it to show up up in the title uh, in title of the window to, to say index that's not what we want we want it to say something different and this doesn't have to say welcome it could say you know whatever the actual name that you want your landing page to be so like you know we can look at that in just a minute we'll get to that in just a second uh, but for right now let's just do a test really quickly let's do a save on this and let's see if this behaves the way we want it to. And actually, you, here's my hypothesis, right? You would have a hypothesis before testing something. Nothing is going to change here. Uh, it's going to look exactly the same. And the reason is because page title is being uh, saved as page. Oh, and the other thing, too, that we need to do where it says echo page, we need to go ahead and change this since we are... Uh, since we created a different variable, let's copy that and let's put it, I think it was also right here. Yeah. Okay. So let's save that. And my hypothesis is that everything will be the same and it is. Okay. Now, the only way to know for sure that our hypothesis here is working, um, that this, this is working the way that we expect it to, is that we would actually need something called index, and we would need some other pages that have different titles. So this is kind of where it's really important that you actually think about your naming convention for your files. So if you were to go to, let's grab something, and let's say that it depends on what you're doing for your first assignment, okay, for your first project. If you are going to take you know, the content that was provided to you um, for the electrician's website. You can do that. You can use that if you want, or you can do something different, you know, like an artist website or whatever. If I pro provide um, materials for any other website, you know, for another client, you can do that. Um, so anyway, but the point is you need to think about the, the names of the files. So if we were to look really quickly at, you know, what this client, this fake client, had said, you know, these are the pages that I would find desirable to have, you know, for my home page, my landing page. I kind of want services to be on that page. Um, I want an, a, a page that's like about us so that people can, you know, know who we are. Um, electrical services, uh, F FAQs, so we could have something called FAQs and you know a page about discounts or specials or whatever so you would need to think about the naming convention and how you want that name to to, to work and so this is the case where if you want you you can make some different um, decisions okay the first decision that you need to think about is how important is it going to be for you to name exactly the name of the file so that it is exactly the name that displays on the page. Um, if that's important that you you know have to do that little amount of work, and that's fine, then you need to make sure that you name your pages appropriately whenever you're actually creating the file names. If you want to be able to just create the file names right now without thinking about it, that is where you could come in here and do 
more in this uh, switch case. All right, so let's just think about this for a second. And maybe what we would want to do, let's maybe, let's actually open this file and let's take some notes at the bottom of the file. Um, okay, so maybe what we could do is we could have our index page. Actually, let's just write it up here in parentheses. We could say that this is going to be index dot php because it's the home page and then about us could be like if you like the word about us if that's what you want it to say up there it could be called about underscore us and then we could strip off we could strip you know we can run a filter through to strip out this underscore okay and then here we could say faqs uh, like that dot uh, php and if you you know, if you want to leave this lowercase, you can. We could run some sort of other filter on to make this capitalized. Otherwise, you can literally just go ahead and capitalize it like that if you wish. And then it's a done deal. And then here we can maybe just call this one discounts, okay, dot PHP. All right. So let's just work with these as the kind of the way that we're going to think about this. Okay, so index, about us, uh, FAQs, and discounts. Okay. So... Let's uh, jump over to our file system here, and let's take a look at how we can start to test this out a little bit. All right, right now all we've got is this page called template. Yeah, okay, does that make sense? All right, so all we've got is this page named template. What I wanna do here is I wanna be able to test that. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate this file. You can copy and paste on Windows. And I'm going to just change the name of it, and I'm going to call it, you know, let's call it about underscore us, okay? And I'm going to get rid of this later, all right? I'm going to get rid of it later. And then let's also make something, let's duplicate this again. And we are going to call it, uh, actually, <laughs> you know what, before we do that, I'm going to move these to the trash real quick. Before we do that, I need to make sure that this file is saved. I don't know that I've done that. So if I need to go ahead and uh, do a save on here, and now I can do my testing, okay? So I actually don't ever have a problem with, you know, potentially making small oversights like that because those are the same kind of oversights that you guys make. So hopefully that's helpful for you um, and it, maybe it prevented you from having a problem. So, all right, I'm gonna duplicate these and I'm just gonna make a couple of these We'll call one of them index.php, and we'll call one of them about us. Okay, now I'm going to save this, and I'm going to go over here. I'll refresh it again, and I'm going to just up here in the URL, I'm going to change this to about underscore us, and then look, it's working, right? See up here in the title, it's automatically grabbing page, and it's making uh, the page title variable based on the page that it's grabbing, and it's putting it into these two positions here and in the title. And then if I go up here and I say index, right, look what it's doing. So it's not calling index, it's calling it welcome because that was the filter that I put here, right, whenever I created this as a special case for index. Now, let's go back here real quickly to um, about us. All right, and one of the things that you'll notice, right, is that we still have that underscore. The other thing too is that we have, you know, no uppercase or anything like that. So one of the things that we can do is we can go ahead up here and we can run. I don't want to do it up here. I don't want to run these extra filters up here because there might be a reason that I would only want just the page name. Like if you wanted to uh, create a class or something, and in, the, in that case, you would not want underscores, dashes, uppercase letters, and things like that for like class names necessarily, right? Or ID names or something. So anyway, uh, let's come down here. This is where we're going to end up actually running some of those filters. First thing I'd want to do is strip out the underscores. So let's do string replace. So we'll do this. Okay, and so the if you remember, there are some different uh, positions, right? So we have three positions with string replace. The first one is the thing that you're looking for, so you'd be looking for an underscore. The second thing is what you're going to replace it with would be a space, okay? So first of all, let's do that as a test. Let's just save that really quickly. 
and we'll come over here do a refresh and then you see that it gets rid of that underscore and it replaces it with a space and it does it up here in the title too so now it'd be good to run UC words on it <clears throat> okay and let's go ahead and complete that let's save that do another test and then we've got two capital letters great perfect Let's jump back over here. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to create, like I said before, I want to create this, let's do this, page class. Um, and so let's come down here and let's uh, say page class equals. And I basically want it to just be page, right? Because I don't, I don't necessarily want it to do string replace and all of that other stuff on there, right? So now I, I have something that can be page class, and then up here I need to do the same thing too. So uh, in this case, I would let's just copy this, okay? And <clears throat> and then here we need to actually have it be a dis a really specific. Uh, name that we generate. So uh, you could call it home or something like that. I, I don't necessarily want this to say home. That, that wouldn't be good. But this way I know that it's the, the home page. And then that way we would know that if that style is on, uh, is showing up in the code as the home style, then, you know, it could be styled specifically for the home page, right? And that's actually not unusual at all for the landing page to have a slightly different layout. So it's really kind of up to you. So let's do a, a really quick test here. And then, you know, but while I'm testing that, the other thing, let's, let's go down here and uh, let's do some testing. So I could come down, let's say in the body, and I could say, uh, you know, class or ID even, uh, ID equals, and then this is where I'd want to do some PHP tags, for instance. And then I can say echo, you know, page class, Right, for instance. Uh, so that's one option. I could also, you know, have that show up in other places. If you wanted to load a style sheet that was specific, you could also come down here and do a conditional statement. Let's just do it actually instead of talking about it. It could just see whether or not we are currently on that class and or on that page. And if we are on that page, then we could load a certain a style sheet, right? So you could do like an if statement, if, you know, let's do our syntax. Um, uh, if page class, let's do, let's do, if page class is equal to home, let's just actually end our PHP tag. And then here we'll start our PHP tag so that we have this ending. Copy that. And okay, so if that's true, all right, if, pa if page class is equal to home, oh, and I need two equal signs there, sorry, one equal sign is, is going to actually make it equal home, all right, that was, that was going to be a syntax error. Um, anyway, uh, if that's true, then what we can do here is tell this, well, we can just actually say home. Dot CSS because we're actually filtering for home. Okay, so let's just go ahead and save that and let's see what happens if we go over here and hit refresh. Okay, and so we've got about us, but if we were to, let's just open this up a little bit and let's do uh, an inspect or the other thing that we could do too is go up to developer and view the source. It might be easier to see. And then right off the bat, you will see right here body ID is about underscore us so it's not doing the capitalization and all of that stuff and you'll see that it's not adding any new style sheets right so if we instead were to go here to index and refresh then what you'll see is that it does change as it was supposed to change so we see that the body ID now is home and you'll also see that it loaded this other additional external style sheet, even though I didn't actually create a new style sheet yet that's called home CSS, and I'm not sure that I would that I would necessarily want to, but if you really wanted your content to be organized in a different way, um, like maybe in some kind of modular grid or something like that that the other pages don't have, then you could specifically create a new style sheet called home that gets loaded only on the home page, and it maybe would overwrite some other kinds of rules or it would just add some rules you know, that whatever, right? So 
you don't have to do this. It's just an option, right? But these are some cool things that you can do by filtering all of this stuff, you know, up inside of the uh, the head or in what we're about to do in the next demonstration is how to get this stuff out of the head specifically and into a functions page so that we can just include functions here and then it would pull in all of our functions that we would want to put into that functions page. So let's look at that next.